But we have a brother with us here today from the Caribbean, Brother David Muhammad, who is the Eastern Caribbean representative of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is not just national, but he's international. And our brother bears witness to just how international he is. Come on up here, Brother David. All praise is due to Allah. Receive him with a warm round of applause. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, I bear witness that there is no God but Allah and that Muhammad is his messenger. I greet you in the greeting words of peace in the Arabic language of Assalamu alaikum. It is indeed an honor, a pleasure, and a privilege to have the opportunity to share a few brief words with you. And I want to start by pointing out that on August the 28th, 1963, the great Dr. Martin Luther King led the million, the March on Washington where a quarter of a million of our people attended. This was historic. Just before he passed, Dr. King quoted Hugo Victor saying that if there is darkness, sin shall be committed. But he who is more guilty of sin is not the one who commits it, but he who caused the darkness. Then Dr. King went on to explain that it is white society that has caused the darkness. They have created unemployment and poverty and discrimination and bad housing. But 30 years later, for the 30th anniversary of the March on Washington in 1993, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan was invited to give a keynote address, but then his invitation was withdrawn because those who are funding the cause of our people behind the scenes did not want his voice of truth there. So they told those leaders at the time withdraw the invitation from the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. A month later after that, in September 1993, there was a reparations conference where they apologized to the minister for having to withdraw the invitation, but the minister pointed out to them that this is a sign of our weakness. And the minister said, it's okay, I will call a march on my own. And then in New York on December the 18th, 1993, at the Jacob Javits Center, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan asked the men, he said, if I come back to New York to speak to men only, will you come out? And the men stood up on the seats in roaring approval saying, yes, we will come out. And then on January 21st, 1994, at the 369th Street Armory in New York, there was the first men only meeting of 25,000 black men in New York. Three days after they raided the mosque, all praise is due to Allah. But then on Saviour's Day, February 24th, 1994, as Minister Abdul Hafiz said, the minister said he wants a million black men to come to Washington. And after he put the word out, he couldn't pull it back. But as he said, we know the history, two million came out. And the minister on October the 16th, 1995, produced the most significant event of black people in all the annals of history from the time of Moses, Abraham, Jesus, Muhammad, and every single prophet and messenger in between. It is our leader and teacher that has achieved that. And in 1995, he gave us the eight steps of atonement, pointing out the wrong, acknowledging the wrong, confessing the wrong, repenting, atoning, forgiving, engaging in reconciliation, and then a perfect union. Five years later, for the fifth anniversary of the Million Man March, for the Million Family March, we got the 10 points of the Bill of Rights for families to live in safe communities, have a livable income, to have a drug-free and crime-free zone and to be able to grow our children up. And then for the 10th anniversary of the Million Man March, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan gave us the nine ministries, nine sub-organizations to reorganize the black diaspora in health and human services, agriculture, education, arts and culture, trade and commerce, defense, justice, information, and science and technology. But beloved, there was one key significant anniversary for the Million Man March that affected another part of the world. Just like one year before the Million Man March, the minister took 2,000 black people back to Africa. Well, for the 19th anniversary of the Million Man March in Kingston, Jamaica, the minister took close to 2,000 people from black America back to the Caribbean because this is where all of us or many of us have some roots in. 
The Caribbean region has given so many great gifts to black America. Marcus Garvey was born in Jamaica. Kwame Ture was born in Trinidad. J.A. Rogers was born in Jamaica. Ivan Van Sertima was born in Guyana. Malcolm X's mother was born in Grenada. And the father of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan was born in Jamaica and his mother was born in St. Kitts. We are all one people, one family. The slave ship just dropped us off on different pieces of rock. And now the ship is passing back to pick us all up. We cannot say that we're no longer family anymore simply because the enemy kidnapped us and put us in different places. So when the minister went into the Caribbean region for the 19th anniversary of the Million Man March, this was preceded by a tour of the Caribbean where the minister met so many people who were leaders of opposition in government and after they met with the minister they became the prime minister or the president of the countries that they were in in 12 different nations the honorable minister louis farrakhan inspired the leadership but now of course we see the caribbean has faced a great challenge with the series of hurricanes that have come in and this is not a new history from as far back in recent times in 1963 Hurricane Flora destroyed almost the entire agricultural industry of Tobago, and then they had to switch to tourism. In 1980, Hurricane Allen destroyed hundreds of homes in Barbados, had a devastating impact on the crops there. Possibly the worst hurricane in the history of the region, 1988, Hurricane Gilbert ripped Jamaica to threads with 318 deaths and 19 billion dollars in damage prime minister edward siaga went on a tour of all of jamaica in a helicopter and he said it looked like the bomb that was dropped on japan by the americans in the cities of hiroshima and nakasaki then in 1995 there were 17 hurricanes that were named by the meteorological authority in 1996 there were seven hurricanes that passed category three and now we had hurricane harvey we had Hurricane Jose, Hurricane Irma, and Hurricane Maria. And Dominica has been almost completely flattened. The island of Barbuda has almost been completely flattened. No electricity, no running water. Houses have been destroyed. But resilience comes out of us when these things happen. And it calls among us a great spirit of doing good so the government of trinidad has offered school spaces for the people of dominica the government of guyana has offered free land for the people of dominica and barbuda and the governments of grenada and barbados have offered police services and assistance containers by the masses being sent there so i just want to sensitize us to this that this is our family we have to remain connected with what's going on because our enemies have misguided us. And as Jomo Kenyatta said, when the white man came to Africa, he taught us to pray with our eyes closed. He had the Bible, but when we opened back up our eyes, we had the Bible and he had the land. Let us not lose our connection to one another as a family. Let us understand that we have a home in the Caribbean. I'd like to thank you so much for being patient with me. Thank you for listening. May Almighty God Allah continue to bless you. I greet you in peace. Assalamu alaikum.